Why is it that the Islam became so much a problem for us? Why? Yes. Uh, you know, um, the problem was the a mass immigration. Uh, why this social and political problem became a religious problem and the terrorist um, uh, problem. I think because there were two main uh, ways to cope with this problem of mass uh, immigration. Uh, one was to, uh, to try uh, effectively uh, to uh, give all the rights uh, of citizenship to the new, uh, to the new um, people uh, coming in. Um, but this means uh, to enlarge welfare state, uh, this has a big cost. This uh, means um, a, this was also, I think, for, uh, for the left, uh, an opportunity. Uh, the other uh, way was not to uh, spend money, uh, but uh, um, uh, to give a sort of uh, recognition to the cultural uh, difference. But cultural difference and rights of individuals are two completely different things. And uh, uh, you can respect uh, a different culture where uh, individuals are not uh, respected within uh, it. And this is the politically correct uh, ideology. I, I think that uh, um, the main uh, mistake, maybe uh, the capital error of the left, was uh, to choose this second uh, way. Uh, multiculturalism consider the extra communitarian immigrants as a group, uh, protect the culture and the values of groups, but this came, became the safeguard of illiberal and anti-democratic habits, and this was the case, I think, in, uh, in Europe. Because Max wrote an essay on, on, the, on the excess of Islamophobia, um, and, 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 and Paolo already you know, explained something of how we came into a stage of Islamophobia. Why is that you use the term Islamophobia? Why not simply speaking about fear of Islam? I don't, I don't actually like the term Islamophobia the same way I don't like homophobia. People who attack homosexuals and Muslims are, gen are probably not afraid of them. Um, it just seems to be a common word. Um, and if we're talking about American Islamophobia, um, it's really what, what, what it takes the form of um, an attempt to institutionalize uh, anti-Muslim attitudes, attitudes that are sort of unfamiliar to the American scene and which didn't necessarily emerge in the immediate wake of 9-11. Um, and, and so I talk about an organized campaign to bring this campaign to bear. Um, in the United States, it's simply impermissible to use anti-Semitic language in public. And because of the civil rights movement, it's generally impermissible to use racist language about African Americans or to run a political campaign on the basis of that. So in many ways, Islamophobia serves, serves as a ventilation mechanism for the right and for people who oppose Muslim immigration um, to express anti-Semitism and anti-black, anti-minority attitudes in a different way. The language is incredibly similar um, so why are we seeing this phenomenon now? Why is um, Gert Wilders hosted um, at Ground Zero um, to large crowds? Why are we seeing um, this campaign against mosques in the United States where the site of mosques are, are even torched? Um, why are we seeing an attempt to in intimidate second generation Muslims on college campuses and for forbid them from uh, acting out their identity in the form of political activity? I really trace it to Barack Obama's election as president. Barack Obama does come from, uh, he's in Indonesia right now, a Muslim country. He has uh, sy sympathy, uh, cultural familiarity with Muslims, and the far right looks at this as, a, as an extreme threat. Uh, when Barack Obama was campaigning, a line from one of his books 
uh, became a, sort of part of his campaign and part of his identity. He said, I serve as a blank screen for people to project their aspirations on. And so the left did that, and I think in a very naive way imagined that he would be their messiah. But the far right projected their own demons onto Barack Obama, portrayed him as a crypto-Muslim Manchurian candidate who was going to install Sharia law secretly in the United States. They portrayed him as a Nazi at the same time as they portrayed him as a socialist. And they were never called out for these contradictions and these smears. Um, the campaign built up, and we see it now. Um, actually, we've seen it in the midterms. Many of the Republicans who won election in the congressional midterms used Islamophobic appeals to win election. The word phobia is crucially important. I would not give it up at this point. And to me, the word phobia is important because of its opposite. And the opposite of phobia for me is not moderation or love, even the love between the turtle and the hippopotamus, which in this wonderful story you gave us. For me, the truly interesting dichotomy is between phobia and fear. And we are talking about a crucial difference, which is for me also an Israeli-European difference, despite the similarities, between fear and phobia. In my country, some people who have been oscillating towards the extreme right, unfortunately, in recent years, are moved by genuine fact-based, history-based fear. You could critique their response to this fear, but it's a real fear which is based both on a hundred years of real, on the ground conflict between Jews and Arabs. Whichever way you look at its origins, it's real. And it caused tremendous agony to both sides and tremendous existential fears on the Jewish side. Coupled with the real fears that my people have with your ghosts, Rob. Because what we have in Israel now, the rise of the right, is not a duplication of Europe's ghosts. It is an outcome of Europe's ghosts, which have never died for us, which are not coming back for us. They've been around all the time. We never trusted Europe so much that we thought its ghosts were dead. Only asleep, perhaps, in the previous decades, but never dead. So we are not surprised. But having said that, I think that the real distinction here is between people who entertain fear, which is real and fact-based and should be dealt with, if possible, but not by extremism, as opposed to people who are dealing with phobias, who do not have the right to express a real fear. And I think many people in, on this continent have not, in the foreseeable past, experienced anything from the Muslim world which justifies hostile fear. And this is where phobia comes in, including Islamophobia, with which some people are dealing very deftly. Islamophobia is irrational fear mostly, not wholly. We had attacks in London and Madrid, but it is mostly irrational, and irrational fear is phobia. I think that phobia and, and fear are both important and uh, uh, the reason why the nationalist, populist, racist rhetoric can work is not because based on real facts but because based on illusions and uh, uh, it can work because uh, we live in a fear society, we live in a hate society, an anger society, when, when people frustrated about their unfulfilled uh, aspirations, fearful about their future perspectives and lacking self-confidence, uh, inability to, to change present conditions and, and realize a, a better future. They, they, they need quick, they need for, for their anxiety, they, they need to find um, simple, simple explanations and uh, quick, quick answers. So this is why nationalists and populist uh, politicians can, can simplify uh, problems, externalize uh, responsibility, pick up a joint enemy, and construct um, a mystic community of like-minded people, an exclusionary community, and uh, 
and launch a fight against these, these enemies. These enemies can be Islam and can be the Jewish uh, community or uh, the Rome community, it depends whether we are in Western Europe, Central, Eastern Europe, but uh, it functions because it gives an opportunity uh, for people who are frustrated to, to express their aggressive uh, impulses. Um, and they are convinced that they can do that because they are convinced that they are on the side of uh, morality, on the side of justice, and the others are on the side of the evil and uh, what, what is wrong. So this, this black and white thinking, this all, and, uh, all or nothing uh, way of thinking is what drives uh, politicians and their followers uh, and their behavior and thoughts to, to extreme. I would like to give a short remark to Islamophobia still. I come from Hungary and that's why I was sitting silently during this discussion. Uh, because in Hungary th there is no Islamophobia because of simple fact that the number of Islamists living in Hungary is zero. Uh, how however, so there is no Islamophobia, but there is a kind of Islamophilia in Hungary. The, the, the first signs of this Islamophilia were in, in the 9-11s, so, and the, the attack against New York. And many people in Hungary felt a kind of um, schadenfreude. And uh, since then, in uh, printed newspapers, on internet sites, or also in public discussions, uh, the Islamophilia uh, appears as an issue, as a, as a common theme. And this is an encoded, this is a, a very nasty encodement for anti-Semitism in Hungary. So you don't... Uh, thanks first to the panel. I thought it was really interesting. And I especially liked um, the remark of Professor Os Salzberger between fear and phobia. Because I think in this distinction lies also what we need to address in Holland. There, there is fear. We should acknowledge that. It comes from a particular group, and a, a large share of that group has a particular faith. Now, that doesn't mean this correlation is causation. Geert Wilders does. He, he puts it together and causes a phobia in that sense. To my mind, what is up to the big political parties is to explain this distinction, but they don't seem able, seem able to do so. And my question is, why is that? Why is the political system in Holland not able to clearly explain this? Is it because there's no place for nuance in public debate, in political debate? And if so, how come we're in a society where people are ruled by fear and by phobia and not by intellect? That's a question. I like it very much, your, your question. Um, I think what has happened with Holland has happened in many uh, European de democratic countries. Um, you, were not, you were not prepared for the bombs, for the political killings. Uh, you had reached a kind of consensus that, gives you, that gave you a great uh, social stability. Uh, so you, you had the feeling that you had reached a level of, uh, let's say, civilization in which it was unthinkable. Huh? political killings, uh, uh, political fanaticism, uh, uh, the cruelty that is uh, behind terrorism. So when this happened in this civilized enclave, you could not respond uh, and you became, well, uh, confused and a bit terrified. Uh, and when uh, a society becomes confused and terrified, uh, tends to act irrationally, to, to uh, abandon uh, rationality. And I think this is what has been happening with uh, the scapegoat, uh, the immigrants as responsible, as the main origin of this uh, disruption of civilization that terrorism means. Uh, I think this is what is happening. That is what is, and if, in, uh, besides the, the 
political killings and terrorism, you had an economic crisis that has produced insecurity, uh, unemployment, and well, you, I think this is the kind of circumstances in which rationality tends to uh, disappear.